everywhere. Adam Hewison here, president and founder of iKnow.com and co-founder of Mock Club with a midday update for Friday, the 2nd of November. Well, the question is, is the glass half full or half empty? In this past week has been one of the most extraordinary weeks that I can remember. Not only were the markets closed for two days, but we also had a historic storm of biblical proportions decimate New Jersey and New York. Today, the B- Bureau of Labor Statistics released the unemployment numbers showing that unemployment stands at 7.9%, which begs the question, is the glass half full or half empty? Looking at the employment numbers, you could argue both ways, that the employment is improving or hasn't improved in four years. My question for both candidates would be, not is the glass half full or half empty, but who makes the glass? This weekend is the last weekend that both President Obama and Governor Mitt Romney have to convince an already exhausted population to buy into their vision of America. All in all, I think we're all exhausted and tired by both candidates and the endless bickering, which is not helping the economy or the jobs picture. Personally, I think campaigning for office should be no longer than three or six months and not several years. These two gentlemen have spent a billion dollars each on their campaigns. What a waste of money and time and resources. Okay, now let's go to the markets and see what's happening in the markets themselves. So here we are on the home page. You can see that the markets did were stronger, but they returned back from resistance. And that's right around the 1436 level, about the midpoint. We talked about this yesterday. But we do have a mixed picture. And here's the mixed picture in the S&P 500. We are looking at one. We've got the trade triangles. The long-term trade triangles are indicating that the trend is up right here. Then you have the intermediate-term trade triangles, which is saying the trend is down. So if you're an intermediate-term trader, you should be out of the market based on this number here, 1430, market's currently trading at 1425. So you should just be out on the sidelines. Now, if you remember, we thought the market would come back up to the midpoint, which is the right here, which is the Dungeon Trade Channel midpoint. We've also, that's probably very close to a 50% Fibonacci retracement. In fact, let's just take a look at that number right now. So let's just clear the screen. Let's get a bit closer in and let's maybe look at maybe a three month chart. It'll give us a better picture of where we're seeing. Here we go. So you simply to look at a Fibonacci retracement, you click on the Fibonacci tool right here. You go from the highs right here, and you just simply pull this down like this. And if we leave that right there on the lows, you can see we got right to the 50% retracement, which is the 1433.35. The high today was 1434, I believe, or something like that. So we've hit that. I think, generally speaking, we're probably just going to move around sideways, which is what this score is indicating, a sideways trend, because you've got mixed trends up here and down here. So you've got this sort of sideways action going, and we're the upper boundaries of that trading range. So let's uh, clear the screen and go to our next market. So we're going to be looking at the Dow next. And you can see pretty much the same picture on the Dow, 55 trading range. and also on the NASDAQ, which is going to be a very interesting thing on the NASDAQ. Now, you did move over the parabolic, indicating that the momentum, is, at least for the moment, has stopped going down. And we are still flat in the MACD. So my feeling is a lot's going to depend on what happens to Apple Computer, which has debuted its iMini pad today. Not too huge, huge crowds, but there were still people lined up in New York, but even some of the people in Hong Kong and some of the Far East, they were not the huge crowds we've seen previously for the iPhone and other elements coming out of Apple. In fact, Apple's down today. We'll be talking about that just a little later on. Now, crude oil was a big loser today. A lot of pressure coming down. The market dropped dramatically down to support around the 85 level, which we talked about before. It just continues to base out, in my opinion. We've got our short-term and intermediate-term trends both pointing down. Both are being correct. If you remember, if you look in our World Cup portfolio, we trade the crude oil based on our intermediate term trends for the direction of the trend and our short term trade triangle for timing purposes. So timing purposes, we are short crude oil from 85.10. And obviously, this is still not bearing any fruit to speak of. So we'll have to be a little bit patient, see what happens on Monday. Same with the US oil, which is the 
ETF. It's right down towards the lower part of the Donchian trade channel. Normally when this happens, like here, you do see a little bit of a bounce. We may still see a bounce there too. So let's move on to our next market. That's the euro. Now the euro is getting very, very, very close to our level where we're going to pull the trigger in a pretty big way, I think. And that's going to be if we go below the 28 level. That's we've talked about this really kind of every time we've talked about uh, the euro, we've talked about the uh, dollar against the euro at 128. So 128, that's like the line in the sand, literally. If you go below there, we're going to see this market come under more pressure. Uh, we were a little bit concerned. If you remember, we talked about these twin peaks and also this pivot point. The pivot point's at 128 again. Below there, you'll be looking at somewhere around the 125 level, which is right here. So that would be 125 would be a target zone on the euro. So let's clear the screen, go to our next market. And the next market we're going to be looking at is the gold market. Gold took a real hit today. You can see it's down pretty dramatically. It's down over 2%, which is a pretty big move for gold. Uh, it's the biggest move we've seen. We see we did move out of it yesterday, but boom, there again, we use the weekly and the monthly for intermediate term traders. So we would have gotten short today at 1704. Markets currently trading at 1675. So a nice profit in that picture right there. So again, the weekly and the daily for intermediate and short term traders. You can look at our website on the World Cup portfolio to see that's exactly what I'm saying is what we utilize in that portfolio. So it looks to me like the market's still on the defensive and we may see further downside action. And looking at the Fibonacci retracement, if we just go here and down to this recent lows, certainly we've just hit 1670s, a 50% retracement, and 1641, which is another $35 lower, is a 61.8% retracement. So I think gold's gonna be on the defensive now for some time. Uh, no reason to see this market reversing anytime soon. Moving along to our next market, that's copper. Copper's also pulled right back down to uh, the lower level of the Donchian trade channel. Only our long-term monthly trade triangle is positive on this market. And you can see we've been sort of, really since we went below the 368 level, which is right here, we've sort of been on the defensive. And there's no reason why that's gonna change anytime soon because the the MACD line, if you see, is still negative, still going down, hasn't made that turn up. So I'd have to say that the intermediate term trend remains negative on copper. Looking at silver market, silver, much the same thing there with the silver. Big down day today. The 30 level should be support. You've got some, uh, these 200 day moving averages pretty much flat. We're below the outside of the Dunchin trade channel. All of our trade triangles, except the monthly, are negative. So I would expect we're going to see a little bit more defensive action on this market. See, we're very close. We are very close to just tipping yesterday. And let me just get this closer in so you can see how close we got. And it didn't work. So let's go to three months and we scope it down. You see how close we just touched the line yesterday, the red line here and turn back down. So again, this is still hasn't turned up. It's flattening out. Uh, of course, today's action is going to make a big difference, but we are outside of the Donchian trade channel, which means we could see a pop back up there. So let's uh, clear the screen, go to our next market, and the next market is going to be Apple. And Apple looks to be on the defensive, which is pretty surprising for a lot of long-term Apple lovers. Uh, another down day in Apple. So we've seen one, two, three, four, five, six, seven down days in a row. Kind of enough, I think most people would be saying. But look at this, hugely oversold. Uh, but there doesn't seem to be anything to the rescue. Now this is, this is the one thing to look at with this market today. This is a 200 day moving average right here, this little line you're seeing on the screen. And if we close below there, uh, that's gonna be not a good sign for Apple, in my opinion. Uh, we do have our intermediate term trend, which we, we recommend using the monthly right here for trend. And the weekly for timing. So if you use this strategy, which we recommend for stocks, you'll be out of this market right around the 656 level, uh, which I think you'll agree is a lot better than where we are trading right now. 
uh, which is right around the uh, 588 level. So again, uh, something to be concerned about and certainly uh, watching this 200-day moving average. If this goes, if this, if Apple goes, that's the whole NASDAQ gone. We'll see the market come under more pressure. So let's see what happens. Let's just clear the screen, take a quick look at our smart scan, which is very cool to look at, and our trade triangles. Let's go to trade triangles. And we'll see what's happening in that market. These now the trade triangles, we use these and we have the ability to scan through these trade triangles. You can see they're all mixed here. You see the little yellow things. If you mouse over them, it tells you exactly when that daily trade triangle hit in. Um, and uh, it's it's very, very cool. So let's just go to equities, volume over two million. I like to, I like to trade big liquid markets, it's just so much better than thinly traded markets. And we'll do it since today. We'll see what we come up with. Now remember, we had some stocks yesterday that we were looking at uh, that we thought would be on, you want to avoid. So let's go to, let's see the change you want to trade. Obviously stocks that have some volume. The uh, Tiva Pharmaceuticals up today. There's a buy signal there at 41, uh, looks like, I'll oh, mouse over it. Here at uh, 4181, currently trading at 4178. So you can buy that pretty much where we got the signal. The other one is the consumer staples. That's a sell there. Uh, and that came in today at 35, even 3502, 3546. So also, obviously you can sell that also there. And this is a buy that's too low there. And uh, Let's see, Vertex, V-E-R-T-E-X, symbol V-R-T-X. That was a sell there, and that came in at 47.39. It's 43.85, so that worked out well. Um, certainly a nice uh, trade on that one, but it looks like it's un that's under pressure. So let's just take a quick look at that chart and see what is going on there. Yeah, big move down. There's the monthly kicked in right there. So negative, negative, negative on this one. Let's go back to our portfolio for a quick moment. I want to just put a look look at a couple of uh, couple of stocks that we can look at. So there's the portfolio coming up now, and we're going to look at a couple of stocks we talked about yesterday. One is Cirrus Logic, C R U S. C R U S, and there it is. Now, this, if you remember, this is a uh, situation where you said to basically we want to be out of this market yesterday uh, or short. It's down today, it's down a buck and a half, uh, 160 down almost 5%, as a matter of fact. So that worked out really well. So let's take another look at one of the other stocks we said to be in or to avoid, and that's Teradata, TDC, TDC. There it is. And uh, let's see what, so we basically, that was down, that's 0.64%. We said to be out of that one, that worked out well. And uh, oops, I don't want that. Let's just go to our next market. And that's going to be the Duke Realty with D-R-E, D-R-E. And there it is. So let's see where that comes in. And Duke Realty basically is up just a little bit. So again, uh, plus, uh, minus 100, minus 100, minus 100, all indicating lower prices. Hey, this is Adam Hewison for Market Club. Thanks for stopping by. And obviously, this is going to be a very busy weekend for a lot of people. Don't forget to vote. I'll see you Monday. Have a great weekend, everybody.